And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the story behind the story. My guest today, Mr. Sterling Allen. Uh, Sterling, again, thanks so much. We were cut off when the, we went to commercial. Go ahead and finish up, if you would. Yeah, let's just give a quick introduction to what this is about. The story title is Mother of All Gushers Could Kill Earth's Oceans. Imagine a pipe five feet wide spewing crude oil like a fire hose from what could be the planet's largest high-pressure oil and gas reserve. With the best technology available to man, the Deepwater Horizon rig popped a hole into that reserve and was overwhelmed. If this isn't contained, it could poison all the oceans of the world. That's what we're facing, and that's what we'd like to talk about in this segment, is there's, there's 70,000 PSI is the amount of pressure that's down under there. Now, the hole is not five feet wide right now. That's what it could become, or bigger than that, uh, if, if things get even more out of hand than they already are. Imagine that much pressure coming through a smaller aperture. You've got sand and grit going through there because of things out of control. That's going to be compromising the, um, the structure, going to make the hole bigger, and the, the strata around it is giving signs that it could be loosening up. And so, you know, when you, when you poke a hole in a dike, it doesn't stay small. The flowing fluid um, makes the hole bigger and bigger, and then you have a gusher. And if that happens down there, um, what we have now could be minuscule compared to what it could become. You know, we're still not at the magnitude of the Exxon Valdez spill. Even now, with what's been released now, we're talking 10 years to clean up. But what could happen, what could be unleashed from this thing, could be unparalleled in the history of the world and could even fulfill some of the biblical scary prophecies about a third of the waters being, uh, or a third of the living animals in the, the sea, the creatures dying. Um, Revelations 8 and 9 or Ezekiel 32, then will I make their waters deep and cause their rivers to run like oil. Um, interesting prophecies in context of this particular uh, cataclysm. Natural, uh, it's a, a man taking his best ingenuity and poking a hole in the dike, so to speak. The dike in this case being an underground oil reserve, super high pressure. This is considered uh, the or second to the, the largest or second to largest oil reserve on the planet, and it was so high pressure that what they actually did is they came in from the side, so to speak, where they thought the pressure would be lower, and even there they were overwhelmed. That's what we're dealing with down there. Well, we'll have uh, we're bringing on Mr. Paul Noel, and you'll be doing the introduction of Paul. But just let me tell you. When I got back on, online uh, after re arriving back to my home office yesterday, uh, Sterling, I, I checked my emails and I had over 500 emails. Uh, and, and of those 500 that were some of my key intelligence people, uh, more than 100 of them were tying into my friend in Washington, D.C., who's, who's part of the intelligence network. And what is not being told and, and, needs to be told, and Paul Noel is right on with this, absolutely right on. They're way, way underestimating uh, what's going on. Right now, uh, as we speak in D.C., there is uh, mobilization of Homeland Security teams. Uh, Napolitano is doing uh, some incredible things, gearing up for basically a martial law condition down in the Gulf states. Now, we have uh, Barack Obama down there right now, or yes, at least it was yesterday, uh, getting everything set up to, to have an unprecedented transfer of wealth, basically to stop the uh, what he says is the, the loss of revenue coming, that's sure to come from shutting down the fisheries um, all along the coast. We're talking all of the Gulf as well as the Florida coast, both Gulf side and east and seaboard side. His father moved to be part of NASA's effort to put men on the moon. Neil Armstrong may have gotten the ride, but his father's computer did the driving. Um, Paul, I'm glad you could join us. Uh, he, he said he could take a few minutes with us today, and we'll take as much time as we can. Um, 
But yes, but Paul, I don't Paul, know. Thank you, Sterling. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, Paul. The, um, am I coming through good? You're coming through just fine. Paul, tell us real quickly, just how bad is this thing? Well, I wish anybody could absolutely tell you. I can tell you that there's a lot of things that even if they were to cap the structure today and successfully manage it, and by God, I hope they can very shortly, that the damage will be still with us for five or ten years into the future. People don't realize the fisheries, for example, uh, the small sea creatures uh, that uh, in their breeding cycles go into these shallow water areas, they burrow into the sands, oh, several inches down. Guess where the tarballs go? Wow. They die in there. They don't come out. That's what we learned with the Exxon Valdez. It took nearly 10 years for the fisheries to recover up there. Okay, uh, Paul, I I've got uh, people in D.C. telling me, and I want you to see if this is, if, if you can verify this at all, and, and I know with your, with your position in the Army, some things need to be a little bit... Uh, Quiet. No, I, I don't. I don't deal with the super secret stuff of the army. That's okay. Right. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, the Exxon Valdez. We're told two hundred fifty thousand barrels of of crude basically went into the the bay. Uh, my my source has told me the estimates now are that plus. We're looking at uh, possibly by the week's end, as much as five hundred thousand barrel equivalent. Now, that's way, way, way more than what the official news media is telling us is going into the Bay right now. Your comments? Actually, the slick size indicates your numbers are probably quite correct. The amount of oil that you see on the surface, though, is probably only half of what's there because as it goes through a mile of coming up, it sort of distills out, and some of the heavier fractions separate into the water near the surface. So it, it's not entirely just a slick. It's it's pollution like all through and through. Five thousand, yeah, five thousand feet deep. That's a that's a lot of water to to come to the surface. Oh oh yes, it's going through. It's like through a fractioning column going a, th a mile of water. Wow. Uh, so the que uh, I'm sorry. The questions you had earlier on the the pressures in these wells. Mm -hmm. The pressure goes up at about one-half pound per square inch as you go down through the seawater, but as soon as you get into the rock, it goes up closer to about a pound per square foot per inch. Wow. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry, per foot. I'm sorry, not per inch, okay. per foot. <laughs> okay. And and there's five and a half miles of rock down there. Holy mackerel. How are they going to be able to cap? They're not going to be able to do anything with that then, are they? Well, Actually, they probably can cap it. They may be successful in capping it. The problem is when you break these structures and, and blow a well like this, if it is not somewhat restricted, and let's hope the bands and kinks manage to restrict it enough to do this, or just lucky the structure might not be that bad, is that you get a fracturing of the rock that occurs down deep in, and this can cause this, the whole structure to become unstable. Mm. Now, to give people a comparison, you've probably seen the uh, oil field fires of the Kuwait situation some years ago. Right. Paul, Paul, hold back to the story behind the story. My guest today from Huntsville, Alabama, Paul Noel, and uh, joining us from Utah is uh, Sterling Allen. Paul, uh, again, compare this to what's, what, what went on in, to, in those uh, oil wells and the fires burning there in Kuwait. When you saw those fires burning, the pressures, and it was stunning to the whole world how those great pressures were, that was about 1,100 PSI. Wow. These wells down here are, are 60,000, 70,000 PSI. Now, 